Hey guys, welcome back to Dixie Bell's YouTube channel. It's Lauren here from Furniture Flipping Teacher, and we're back for another FFT Friday. And today we are gonna be doing things a little bit different. So strap in and come along for the ride. Several months ago, my mom was out thrift shopping and she came across this Lane cedar chest, but it's a very unique cedar chest in that it actually has legs down below and there are also drawers over here that you can put things in along with the original lane cedar part in there. I actually recently had someone reach out to me, someone that is local here, and it's actually someone that knows our landlord, and she is on her way right now to come and check this out, and we're gonna talk about some colors. Oh, looks like she's here right now. All right, we finally came to a decision, but really quick before we jump into making this thing over, I wanted to talk to you a little bit about commission work and just talking with your customers. So I invited her over so that she could see first and foremost, the piece itself to make sure that it was something that she wanted. And then second, so that she could pick out a color. She was a little bit unsure of what color she wanted to go with. And so I took the time to swatch out. So she actually narrowed it down to blues. So I swatched out a few blues that she picked out of the collection of Dixie Belle paints that I do have. And this is so that you can see it dry, but I also have the Dixie Belle fan deck which is going to allow people to see what those colors are dry it has all 64 um, colors in there for the chalk paint and then they've also got the silk paint line fan deck they've got the stains which this helped with us sorry I keep doing it backwards this helped us choose what stain color she wanted. And then if your customers are ever interested in the metallics or the waxes, we've also got those. So definitely invest in these if you are doing custom work with Dixie Bell colors often, because your customers will be able to see it first and foremost, hold it up to the piece, but then you can also swatch it out. But if, say you don't have the colors that they may want, but you've got this, this can really help you. So ultimately we went with a color that I didn't even swatch out, but I actually had done another custom piece a few weeks back over on my channel. So be sure to go over there and check that out. But what color we are going to be ending up putting on this piece is going to be a mixture of in the navy and caviar. So you'll have to wait and see what that looks like. I'm gonna go ahead and get started with removing all of the hardware and getting this baby cleaned up. So I actually am gonna be reusing this hardware and putting it back on once we're done. But I need to remove it to get all of the gunk underneath of it off of there. And then also we're gonna be spicing it up a little bit. It looks a little bit worn out because these used to be gold and they're now more silver. So they've definitely worn out um, over time because this, this piece is quite old. So Lane Cedar chests actually lock but there's been a recall on these if you didn't know that, which I feel like everybody knows that, but if you didn't know that and you're remaking one, you need to be sure to take off the lock part. So my customer wants to keep this mechanism here. So what I'm gonna be doing is taking off the latch, the part where it latches onto, so that way you know, it doesn't ever get closed and not being able to open again. For instance, I know it's, it would be rare, but a child could go in there and then it get locked and that's where the safety issue comes in. So definitely make sure to remove the locks. Looks like it's gonna be pretty easy to do so.
Perfect. So now it's going to be all good and safe to close. It won't latch, so you don't even have to click that button to open it anymore. It'll just open up and down all on its own, which is perfect. All right, the next thing we're gonna be removing is actually this gold trim here. We kind of just decided, well, we were thinking about changing the color of it, but we ultimately decided that it would probably be a little bit more modern if we removed it all together. So I'm gonna just take this multi-tool and shove it in there a little bit and just kind of start prying it back. I don't wanna go too crazy or too fast because I don't wanna ruin anything. It's just glued into this little area here. And sometimes you're gonna see things that you're going to have to fix. So obviously I'm not just gonna leave this gash here, um, these indents where these were in. Uh, so I'm gonna be taking some Bondo and filling that in because it's a deeper gouge. Dixie Mud won't cut that. So I'm definitely gonna be using that Bondo. But overall, really easy to remove. So now let's clean. I am gonna be cleaning with white lightning today. So I just dumped some white lightning in this water and the spray bottle and it dissolved and created the cleaner. This is going to degrease everything, get all that dirt and grime off. And now we rinse everything off so that the paint isn't adhering to the cleaner, but rather the actual surface. So I'm just gonna grab some clean water. That's why I like to use a double bucket. That way I don't have to go rinse out my bucket or anything like that. Cleaning is done, so now it's time for Bondo. Okay, so for Bondo, this is what it looks like and we are going to be mixing it together and applying it to the surface. I'm not going to go into too much detail about the Bondo, but I will say you just need to start out with a smaller amount and then you can always make more because this stuff hardens very quickly. And a lot of the times you'll need more than one application of the Bondo, especially if you're filling bigger gouges like this. Okay. Bondo is on, that's got to dry. I can already tell that we're definitely going to need a second application. So once it's dry, we'll come and sand it all down, smooth as we can, and then we'll apply round number two. All right, the Bondo is dry, so we're going to go ahead and sand this back to get it all smoothed out. All right, so actually a lot more of it is smooth uh, than I thought it would be. I just have a few little spots where we didn't quite get it all filled. You can kind of tell where the darker areas are. That's where the sandpaper didn't even hit it. So definitely still indented there. So I'm gonna add just a tad bit more Bondo and sand that back and then we should be good to go. Second round of Bondo is dry and sanded and we're all smoothed out. So no more Bondo. Next step is we are going to scuff sand the whole top and then I'm actually going to be stripping back the legs to the raw wood. To do the scuff sanding, I'm gonna be using a 220 grit and then when I get down to the legs, I'm gonna go lower for a much coarser grit of sandpaper down to an 80 grit. Oh, all right. 
sanding is officially done. Next step, since I've got it upside down already, I figured that I might as well go ahead and do what I'm gonna do to the legs. And I am going to be applying Dixie Belle's Voodoo Gel Stain, the water-based kind. So I've got my Tobacco Road, which is the color of this Voodoo Gel Stain. And all I'm gonna be doing is using a lint-free cloth to apply the Tobacco Road and just exploded on me. So I'm just gonna give it a nice shake. Get it all shook up in there. And then all I'm gonna do is put some on my lint-free cloth, pretty decent amount. And then we're just gonna take it and rub it against the surface that I want to have as tobacco road. So this is the stain that she picked out and it's not too dark, not too light. I really like this stain. You wanna make sure that you sand down all the way to the under part of the finish because if you don't, then it'll take differently and kind of adhere differently um, in different parts of the wood. You might even have to go back and sand a little bit if it's not looking right. This all seems to be going on pretty much the same as the whole piece. So once I got that done, I'm just gonna keep on doing that all the way throughout the entire base, all the legs and all the feet. I personally enjoy using the Voodoo Gel Stain because it is water-based and it dries quickly. You can use a water-based um, top coat pretty quick after you apply it, just basically when it's dry. You can go ahead and use the same top coat that you use with paint, whereas with the oil-based gel stain, you gotta wait about six to eight hours to let it dry and then it just also becomes more messy. I think you're all good on the tobacco road. So I'm gonna flip this back over. This is just gonna dry while we begin painting the top part. So before I get to painting, I am going to be using some clear Dixie Belle Boss because if you'll notice some of the irregularities of the surface here, it's because when I was sanding the Bondo, I definitely broke through the finish. And then when I was just doing the scuff sand, I didn't break through the finish, but I want it to be all locked in there, one, so that it doesn't bleed, even though I don't think it's going to bleed because it is going to be such a dark color, but it's best if you have one consistency of a surface before you start painting with your actual paint because if you think about it the raw wood is going to soak in the paint a bit more than the finished wood will so i'm going to make it basically all like finished wood by putting this clear primer over it Clear boss is on and I just decided to put it all over. That way we've got one consistent surface to put the paint on. So once that dries, we'll be able to paint. So I really wanna keep the original cedar inside of the chest. So what I'm gonna do is tape off the edge here so that I don't risk getting any paint up top and only on the sides. All right, so as I said, the color that we finally landed on is a mixed color that I created for another client. It's in the navy plus caviar. So we're gonna be getting a very deep blue, navy blue, but not quite as dark as a midnight sky, which is another color by Dixie Belle. So 
This is the leftover that I had from the other project, so I didn't have to mix any for this project. I'm pretty sure that this will cover all of it, but I might need to create some more. We'll see after the first coat goes on. I am gonna be using the mini angle brush for this, and I've always got my Mr. Bottle for just thinning out the paint a little bit and helping it go on with less brush stroke marks. So let's go ahead and get started. All right, coat number one is all finished up. I'm loving the way that it's looking with the base color, the tobacco road. That is, I was just unsure if it was gonna be okay because this is such a dark color, but because it's still showing that blue, the dark blue plus the brown is really coming together. Okay, we're back here for coat number two of the blue, but before I get on to that second coat, I always like to take a sponge sander and just go over the first coat and eliminate any spots where it could be a little bit bumpy or any fibers could have gotten in there. So I'm gonna do that with my sanding sponge real quick and wipe back the dust and we'll be ready for coat number two. So between coats, I also like to wrap my brush in a plastic piece, either cellophane or a Ziploc baggie. Either way works, but I'm just gonna work on keeping the air away from the brush so that it doesn't get hardened, but also so that you don't have to clean between coats. All right, finished with the second coat, so that's gonna dry and we'll move on to the top coat. So like I usually do with hardware, I keep it, but I update it. So like I talked about in the beginning, I'm gonna be using gold gilding wax to update this hardware. So I think these were originally gold because the feet on the chest are gold as well as that molding. That was all gold, so I'm pretty sure that this just wore off after being pulled in and out so many times. So I'm gonna update it and I've got a little detail brush here and I'm just going to take it and brush it on like so. We don't want too much excess. We just want to brush it on and cover it as much as possible. And then we'll let that kind of soak in and dry and then we'll buff it out. So I'm gonna let those dry and we're gonna move on to the feet. All right, all finished with the gold gilding wax. Again, that's gonna dry for a while, so now we're just basically waiting till everything dries and then we'll come back with the top coat. I know I said that last time, but I actually did end up doing a third coat on the blue because there was just a few spots that I needed to add a little bit more paint to, so I decided to do it to the whole thing. Here we are, it's time for top coat. So I'm gonna actually be using clear coat satin. So there's gonna be just a tiny sheen, nothing crazy, but it's gonna give it that layer of protection. 
So I'm gonna shake that up. I'm going to apply the satin, but before I do, I'm actually going to dump it in this and mix it into my darker color. I've done this before, and the reason is so that we get less streak marks. If it's tinted to the color, then it's gonna blend in a lot better. I don't wanna do too much at first because Again, it's tinted to this specific color. So if I do too much, then I'll just have leftover top coat that's tinted when I really don't need to use that much. So I'm also gonna just water it down a slight bit and then we'll go ahead and mix it all up. And it's just gonna basically look like paint, but once it dries on the surface, it will actually dry clear just like the color of the piece and it'll be a protective surface. And it's a little bit chilly out and so usually when it's colder out or when it's really hot out, your paint is gonna tend to dry a little bit faster and kind of just stop and drag a little bit. So I'm going to just use a tad bit of water. We don't want to put too much on there because we still want it to be protective. We don't wanna water it down too much. So just a tad bit to get away from that drag. The drag will really leave marks, heavy streak marks, so you don't want that drag on your piece. And again, it looks a little bit scary because it's a completely different color, but I promise you it will dry and it will dry that blue color. All right, top coat's on there. It's gonna dry now. And again, because it's a little bit chillier out, the dry time is going to be longer. So I'm actually gonna put a fan on it and it's gonna dry in no time. We're ready to install the hardware. It's got that gold gilding wax on it and it's all dry now. So I'm just gonna go ahead and replace that. Let's slide in the drawers. All right, and then last step is to take the tape off and we've got a finished product. We got those nice crisp lines, voila. This flip was so much fun. The transformation from that yellow blonde wood color to this deep navy with the tobacco row down here on the bottom, it all just came together so nicely. And I'm really glad that this ended up being a custom piece because she could not have chose a better color in my opinion. And I was going back and forth between several different colors figuring out what I was trying to do. So like I said, I'm so glad that she came in to the rescue and picked out this beautiful color. I just know that she's going to love this. Also, I wanted to talk real fast about pricing. I ended up getting this piece for $50 and that's a little bit much in my opinion, but just because of the uniqueness of this piece, I was willing to pay a little more. And plus I had a little bit of a push from my mom because like I said, she absolutely loves this piece so thanks mom for always finding pieces for me and pushing me to step out of the normal pieces anyway the price that I ended up charging my customer was $250 so I think I spent right around four hours on this in total four to five hours so a pretty good hourly rate there around $50 an hour so not too bad I love doing custom pieces. Thank you guys so much for joining us here for another FFT Friday on Dixie Bell's channel. Get subscribed down below and also head over to my channel, Furniture Flipping Teacher, and we would love for you to subscribe over there as well. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you on the flip side.